Growing up on the coastline of California, all of my friends and I wanted to be dolphin trainers when we grew up. <laughs> we all wanted to swim with marine life every day, but most of us realized very early that the odds just weren't great, plus it just felt pretty unethical for the dolphins. <laughs> Over the years, most of my friends grew up and got real jobs, but I didn't let go of my fishy dream, as corny as it sounds, and that drew me to the largest living organism on the planet. So here I am, a marine biologist studying corals on the Great Barrier Reef. It sounds like a dream, right? But not long after I moved to Australia, I watched my beloved corals, the colorful framework of the reef, turn stark white from overheating. I realized that with the challenges that coral reefs face today, not only my career, but also potentially the entire ecosystem that I had pledged my soul to, potentially had an expiration date. Instead of giving up and giving back to that real job, I decided to immerse myself in the world of coral restoration. Now, I plant corals to help restore key sites on the Great Barrier Reef, and that is a dream come true. Worldwide, healthy oceans, not only coral reefs, are keys to the health and heart of the planet Earth. Oceans are powerhouses, providing us with food, biodiversity, income, culture, and over half of the oxygen that we are all breathing here today. Um, and everything is connected, from humpback whales leaving the polar winter to go breed in the tropics, and sea turtles crossing entire oceans to lay their eggs on the same nest that they were hatched on, the beautiful complexity of the ocean knows no bounds, and coral reefs are at the heart of it all. Coral reefs, an ecosystem taking up only 1% of the ocean, circling the equator there, house 25% of all marine life. Uh, meaning these guys are key spots for tracking our planetary health. The colors, the life, coral reefs are just incredible. When I went to my first coral reef in Hawaii on a family vacation, I just cried and cried into my snorkel mask out of pure joy. However, when I experienced the Great Barrier Reef for the first time, the tears that I experienced were not for joy, but for despair. I was diving in the northern section of the Great Barrier Reef in the winter following uh, the most devastating bleaching event the reef had ever experienced. It's estimated that about 90% of the reef experienced some degree of bleaching during the summer of 2016, and I was swimming in the aftermath. Corals bleach mainly from high water temperatures. It causes the corals to lose all the algae living inside of its tissue, and that's what gives the coral all of its color, but also most of its nutrition. Now, bleached corals are not dead corals, but these corals are seriously struggling to survive in these high temperatures. After years and years of dreaming of immersing myself in the legendary Great Barrier Reef, I was experiencing devastation instead. Thankfully, the reefs have shown an incredible recovery to repopulate and regrow after these mass bleaching events, but they're in a very vulnerable spot recovery-wise. Corals, they grow very slowly and typically only reproduce once a year, which is pretty much worst case scenario from a repopulation standpoint. Uh, if these bleaching events are 10 years apart, then the reef will have an, enough time to actually repopulate and regrow. Uh, but unfortunately, as us humans make our presence on this planet increasingly known, they are not getting that time, okay? These bleaching events have become much more frequent and much more widespread. The Great Barrier Reef alone has experienced four mass bleaching events in the last seven years. Okay, and we can attribute that to anthropogenic or human-driven climate change. Some studies suggest that in the last 50 years, we have lost over half of the coral reefs on our planet. Meaning if we don't act quickly, pristine, abundant reefs will become a thing of the past. Now, I know this sounds very doom and gloom, and deep down, it is. <laughs> um, but this is not an inevitability, okay? Thankfully, uh, passionate people around the planet have stepped up to protect, study, restore, and raise awareness for these crucial ecosystems, creating a whole new generation of coral gardeners. Uh, coral restoration is not a new concept. 
Artificial reef structures have been planted on degraded reef systems for over 50 years to, to provide a nice solid substrate for new corals to land on and grow. Um, over the years, the technology has improved quite a bit. Uh, there are now several large-scale organizations where scientists are trying to genetically modify more resilient coral species, as well as collecting and housing coral fragments from every single coral species on this planet, just in case we start to lose them. Um, in a more hands-on approach, Physical restoration involves some kind of coral nursery like this, which is just a structure where we grow coral that has been broken off from the reef somehow, mainly from storms. Uh, these structures have lots of natural water flow, which maximizes growth rates, and it's literally just a middle ground for these corals to stay instead of dying in the sand, which often happens. Now comes the fun part out planting corals back onto the reef. Now, a common method is a reef star, which is kind of like a big star frame structure where corals are zip tied to that structure and popped back onto the reef to kind of settle it in spots that are really degraded. And another method is literally using a cement or an epoxy to glue coral fragments onto bare spots on the reef. Uh, but the method that I use is the coral clip. Just like this. It's made out of stainless steel. It was designed by Wavelength Reef Cruises and the Coral Nurture Program, where I live and work in Australia. Uh, it's basically a little nail with a little spring clip off the side of it. It's very simple, and it requires very minimal training to use it. All you need is a hammer, a small brush, and a desire to help. Uh, what we do is we hammer this nail into the limestone reef. We take that little brush and scrub off any algae that might be on the reef, because corals can't solidify onto that algae. And then we simply clip a coral fragment underneath it where the clip holds it in place. It takes about six weeks for the coral skeleton to attach to the coral rock, and then it just keeps growing there. The Coral Nurture Program has planted over 100,000 coral fragments back onto the reef in the last few years in a partnership between tourism and research. We work alongside the researchers at the University of Technology, Sydney, to ensure that we are using the most effective methods possible, and they have found that we have an 80 to 85% success rate, which is very strong. We would have been happy with 10. <laughs> Uh, and we're so proud, uh, and it's clearly caught on, because we have distributed these coral clips to over 24 countries around the world. Now, a potential misconception of coral restoration is that it's a beautification method. While improving the aesthetics of the reef for tourism purposes is a bonus, it's not the reason we plant coral, okay? Our goal is nothing less than to assist natural recovery on the reef. By maintaining our coral cover, we can ensure that Mother Nature, who had already nailed it before we ever came along, <laughs> she gets a bit of a boost in the spots that truly need it. Uh, the more corals we have on the reef, the more successful the mass reproduction events are. And my colleagues and I have seen this success firsthand. Every year, most coral colonies uh, will spawn within a few days of each other, releasing billions of egg and sperm bundles into the water column, uh, and it looks a little bit like an upside-down snowstorm going upwards. <laughs> uh, as the full moon rises, my colleagues and I have all watched the corals that we had personally planted back onto the reef release all their egg and sperm cells into the water column to be fertilized and eventually land back on the reef. We watched them spawn. It was just incredible. Uh, we all cried. <laughs> it was the most profoundly moving experience I've ever felt to know that we are successfully assisting Mother Nature to maximize her perfect processes in the simplest way possible. Okay, finally, tears of joy on the Great Barrier Reef. <laughs> now, uh, with coral reefs inhabiting roughly half of all the countries we have on this planet, they are all facing the same threat. Um, and that's emissions-driven climate change. If we don't get a handle on global warming, these bleaching events will continue, and we'll start losing corals faster than we can plant them. But we do have hope, and we want to run with it. Uh, we truly believe that we have found a saving grace to help 
boost coral recovery in my backyard, a small section of the Great Barrier Reef. Although that area is tiny, maintaining these sites maintains their function and also keeps them worth visiting. Um, and if we can scale this up around the globe, it will have tremendously positive impacts on the plight of corals all over the world. We have only scratched the surface in terms of coral restoration and how far we and other coral restoration organizations can take it. And the only thing that's missing is you. <laughs> As Sir David Attenborough said it himself, no one will protect what they don't care about and no one will care about what they've never experienced. Uh, and so I think you're really gonna like the solution. Go on vacation. <laughs> you deserve it, you've been working hard. <laughs> Uh, experience a profoundly moving nature of submerging yourself on a coral reef. Learn as much as you can and take that and multiply it. Support the different uh, coral restoration organizations around the world because even though they do use different methods, they all have the same end goal, which is maintaining the health of the reef and thus our home. I have seen coral restoration success firsthand, and with a sprinkle of realistic optimism, uh, we believe that a network of collaborators around the world can help build our coral lifeline's defense against this mounting threat. Now, my childhood dream of swimming with marine life every day came true. I'm one of the lucky ones. <laughs> but my new dream is that my grandchildren's grandchildren can have even a fraction of the same privilege that I had as a kid, which was to experience the glory and wonder of a great barrier reef, or any reef, that I first experienced many years ago, and I still experience every single day. Thank you. Thank you.